Good evening. Welcome to the July 7th, 2015 uh, uh, Council meeting. Uh, roll call. Done. Mayor Bruski? Here. Member Neary? Here. Member Burns? Here. Member Tucker? Member Baker? Yes, ma'am. Member Gifford? Here. Member Lynn? Here. City Administrator Giffen? Here. City Attorney Edge? Here. All rise for prayer and close the meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under uh, Mayor's report, I have nothing to report this time. Uh, city Administrator's report. First thing on my agenda, I've got a one. Any cow parking request so 308 Vine Street. Uh, according to the application, the uh, applicant does not own a vehicle, have a vehicle, so therefore there's no uh, registered license plates with the handicap insignia from the state of Kentucky. Uh, obviously, no serial number for the vehicle. Uh, according to our ordinance, I, I don't see how I can uh, recommend this for approval. I think I would mention that per the ordinance, I guess they could uh, appeal to the city council on the grounds that the applicant is technically eligible for one, or they had a car. Uh, but in this case, unless they come back, I just, according to our ordinance, I, don't, I would not recommend this for approval. Just for the fact that they don't have uh, a vehicle, uh, so therefore it doesn't meet the current ordinance. We're in a motion to deny it, do we? The uh, second thing is a follow up um, a discussion we had last month regarding the 100 block of Fifth Avenue in regards to its status as a one or two way street. Uh, per council's request, I sent out letters to all residents and property owners of that block. Uh, and I only heard a response back from one of the residents. Uh, that was actually this morning. They stated to me that uh, because most people park facing the west as if it was still one way, it was create confusion. Uh, this individual said if, if uh, it was up to him, he would recommend it being one way again. So that was the only uh, response I heard back from the letters. Uh, so with that being said, I'll turn it over to you all for, for any more discussion. I think we should leave it the way it is. One, uh, one, leave it as a one-way street. It's a two-way right two I know it's a two-way. I said leave it as a one-way you want to change it to a one way? You want to make a motion on that? Yes, to make a motion that we change it back to uh, the Fifth Street back to a one way situation as opposed to the one hundred block. And yeah. uh, West. 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 Uh, no motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Bill. Any comments? Yeah, I have quite a few actually. Okay. I spent a lot of the last month down in this quadrant of the city. I'm calling it Northwest Dayton. Um, on that, the problem we have is in Old Brooklyn, the streets are laid out wacky uh, compared to the Jamestown area. On that block, there's only 17 homes, one on the north side. Uh, <coughs> there's a total of 265 homes down in that area. This is from McKinney, West, Fifth, North. And I've sat down there a lot, talked to a lot of people, watched the traffic flow. A lot of people come in, when they're coming into town, coming home, turn left on O'Fallon and go down Fifth Avenue to get back into those neighborhoods. The 100 block of Fourth is 20 feet wide. The 100 block of Fifth is 30 feet wide. Plenty enough room for, it's much wider street. It's the same width as Vine and Walnut, actually. Um, the problem, really, is the confusion of people parking on the south side facing west. They're parking in the wrong direction. And we don't know yet what's going to get down at the end of Walnut. Uh, the last presentation we saw from the developer was there would be 100 parking spaces down by the Walnut, at the end of Walnut Street Park. If they're gonna, all going to be accessing on, on Walnut, 
to get out to six and back on to get home. It's going to have a lot of congestion there. At probably, as I was saying, the bill, one of the craziest intersections in town at the Shell Station there for pedestrian traffic. Uh, you got the bus stop there, you got Susan there, and turning north onto Walnut, there's parking on both sides. So it's really a dangerous intersection. My point is, I think. I understand that, that it was always easy, or it was always hard. People get used to that. Um, I just hate to put any traffic down on that 100 block of 4th Street. That's so narrow. There's 17 houses on the 100 block of 5th Street. There's 24 on the 100 block of 4th. Uh, there's plenty of parking on 5th Street. So everybody could park on the north side. Uh, or, and, and that would be with eliminating parking on the south side of the street, leaving it two-way, okay, be, behind the printers and everything. Or the other option would be, the easiest option at this point, I think, is to just put reminders on these vehicles that are parked there. Actually, quite a few of them have Ohio tags. Um, put reminders on their windshields for a while to park with the traffic, park eastbound to avoid the confusion. There's plenty enough room to get around all the traffic, all the parked cars there. Uh, I just think making this, it was one way we allowed the developer to build the wall, previous council did, didn't like it, and, and at that time we made it two-way. They had citizen complaints about the access to O'Fallon and from O'Fallon, so opened it back up, left it two-way. I think making another change at this point before we find out what kind of density is going to be down there, is, that's going to be more confusing a year down the road. So I, I think... If the police would, like, I'm not trying to ticket anybody, just inform everybody down there. That if you're going to park on the south side of the street, park eastbound. That would avoid a lot of the confusion. Changing it back to one way, I think you're going to get so much traffic down on 4th, and that is very, very narrow. And unfortunately, between 4th and 5th in that 100 block, that's an unimproved alley there. So they don't have the, the, the off-street parking capability at this point. I'd say wait until we find out what's going down at the end of Walnut. That's my opinion, sir. And I gave everybody the handout, a lot of figures on there. I also have some long-term suggestions. Uh, the mayor and I have talked about this a little bit last night. <clears throat> I think we need to look at an additional light down the road, either at Irvin, make an Irvin two-way all the way to six, or a light at Walnut. Especially if we get those hundred, those extra hundred cars coming in and out of there, uh, and depending on what development happens in the hundred block, so I, I would recommend actually to, to leave it as two way for right now, have that parking turned around to reduce the confusion and see how that works out until we're sure what's going on down there. Any more comments? Can I say something? No. Can I say something? No. Any more comments? Joe, I agree with you. That seems to be a little early. But uh, the, only, the only thing that I can see that this doesn't make sense would be that when you're coming off Walnut to turn right or left onto six, right, is dangerous. I've Absolutely. done it. I've done it a hundred times, a thousand times, uh, and every time you're you're, you're, you're in that you you don't get hit. So when you turn right down a Fallon. Or right down fifth, it makes sense to go down that way. So they're. I'm sorry. I'm recommending leaving it two way. Right? <coughs> I apologize. I was reading your map wrong here. And if you would eliminate, if you were to decide to eliminate the parking on the south side, most of the south side, that street's 500 feet long. There's only 17 houses. That's enough room for 25 cars. Plus, most of the property on the south side. Most of the curb cuts are driveways behind the printer, and almost every property going down the 100 block of six has a driveway in the back that you're not supposed to be parking in front of. So, what really be losing that many parking spaces? I I understand the concern of people coming down the line. In fact, Rick Frank called me out the other night. I said, no, actually, it is a two-way. Um, I think for right now, that would be the easiest solution until we find out what's going on. So your solution is just leave it the way it is until further development? Until further development and ask that the people that park on the south side park the correct direction to avoid confusion. 
and see how that works out. Right. Uh, first of all, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know it was a two way street. I didn't know it was changed. I remember uh, a council meeting a while back where um, I believe they wanted to block it off at that time because of, of the way it comes off Manhattan Harbor there. Um, and I guess that might have been when you all changed it, I don't know. Uh, but the other thing I don't understand here, you know, if you're coming down to Fallon and then turning uh, right on the uh, Fifth Street, you know, and Joe, you talked about this many a times about the congestion right there with all the stop signs and everything. And, and, and I think, you know, um, that's just, that, that it's still going to be a problem. Um, you come, it's still turn right because you can go down on 4th Street. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if we, I think we ought to just take it back. My personal opinion, like I voted the last, take it back one way. Anybody else got any comments? <clears throat> Member Baker? Yes. Member Gifford? Yes. Member Lynn? Yes. <clears throat> Member Neary? This is to change it back to one way this is west. To change right. it back yep. to one way. No. Member Burns? Yes. Yes, we The uh, Last thing I have, I'm, and this is covering for, for Anthony, who's on his honeymoon, which I'm well and good really, down in Charleston. But I've got, uh, and I don't know if you all received uh, the monthly uh, commercial community advantage program, uh, split to the one. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, the applications come in, two of them are rejected. <coughs> I know several of them are starting to roll in. In fact, I got one on my desk uh, this afternoon. Case Catering is opening. Uh, a law firm is taking the place of TS Tan. The restaurant's going to be opening, uh, I believe, in, in August. Uh, so we're excited. But if you have any questions, uh, like how many uh, active applications do we have? I mean, that are. There are uh, have been four received total, two rejected, and two are uh, on the table. More likely going to be accepted. They're still waiting for the client that, background. Does that include the catering place? Uh, no, that does not. She has not applied for uh, a sign. We anticipate a signage grant that has not come in yet. If there's no other questions, Mayor, that's all I have. Uh, consent agenda, the approval of the minutes from the uh, June 2nd meeting. Any motion? Make the motion to approve. Then it's by Neary. Second. Second. Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, ordinance and orders. Second reading of 2015-6 annual budget for the fiscal year of 2015-2016. City of Dayton, Kentucky, 2015 number six. An ordinance adopting the City of Dayton, Kentucky's annual budget for fiscal year July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2016. Remaining revenues and resources and appropriating some funds for the operation of city government. This ordinance adopts the budget for fiscal year 2015 for the general fund, municipal aid fund, park board fund, park tax fund, urban renewal fund, and the sergeant's park fund. And that's the second reading. Any motion? I'll make a motion. We approve 215 number six. Motion by Danny. Second. Second by Jerry. Roll call done. Member Gifford? Aye. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Neary? No. Aye. Member Tuckers? Absent. Member Baker? Aye. The ayes have it. That's uh, carried. Uh, first reading of ordinance correcting two unintentional clerical errors. City of Dane, Kentucky, 2015, number seven. An ordinance correcting two unintentional clerical errors on the amounts charged under the Dayton Code of Ordinance 110.13. This ordinance amends Dayton Code of Ordinances 110.13b, which sets the rates for rental property license tax to a corrected amount of 011 times gross receipts or $50 per year, whichever is greater. This change <coughs> is being made as a result of a clerical error in drafting Ordinance 2014, number 11. And that's just the first reading. Uh, the, the next one is uh, uh, 
a resolution 2015-9R executing an, an easement in the favor of the Northern Kentucky Water District. City of Dane, Kentucky Municipal Order 9R, a municipal order authorizing the grant and execution of the easement in favor of the Northern Kentucky Water District on property commonly located at 232nd Avenue. Be it hereby ordered by the City of Dane, Kentucky as follows. Section 1, that the City is hereby authorized to grant and execute the attached and herein incorporated easement in favor of the Northern Kentucky Water District on property commonly located at 232nd Avenue. Section 2, the mayor and any other necessary official is authorized to sign all documents necessary to effect the above provision. Section 3, the short, this order shall be maintained and indexed in the official order book by the city clerk treasurer. Michael's going to explain this. This came through uh, in the month of June, a request from the, the water district, as I, as I mentioned uh, before. The address may be a little confusing, 232nd uh, Avenue. It's actually... Uh, to get your bearings, it's uh, right off of Mary Ingalls Highway as you come through the flood wall off of uh, 4th Avenue where there's a little park there. Uh, all the water company is doing is uh, they're uh, putting a new uh, water main in. It's not going to affect, uh, it will affect a little bit of the road. They'll have to dig into Mary Ingalls Highway and then a little bit into our property to put the new water main in. There's a, uh, some benches and trees and basketball court down there and paving. If they're not affecting any of that, they'll, they'll uh, have to go into the grass a little bit for that ball be replaced. So uh, they've asked for a, a temporary and a permanent easement, which which Donna ran, so that's kind of the gist of it. But I wanted to clarify the location since that's a little confusing. Okay, we need a motion on this. Why wasn't there any on <coughs> water line to begin with? I, I thought for utilities like that, there should have been an easement already in place. There would have been an easement already in place, but what they do is. Uh, what they're doing is they're always update their easements whenever they go to put when they go to change the lines and stuff they go ahead and update their easements there uh, when they do the temporary so you update the permanent ones as well just oh. to get to that. Yeah. just a, it's just a uh, standard practice for them because they deal with so many particular easements mm -hmm. it's just to make sure there's no way there's not an easement so they just do it as add up and in the temporary one public work that's 10 feet on either side for them to do the work, and I guess public works, Michael, would approve whether or not it's brought back to the contour in the grass area, especially. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll monitor it, but they do, the water company does a pretty good job. We'll make sure they, they see them straw back to where it's supposed to be. I would like the motion we passed 2015 9R, but I have a comment. Uh, okay. uh, motion by Bill. Is second. I'll second. Second by Joe. Uh, comment? Yeah, Mayor, uh, Michael, I had to talk to you about this. I want to reiterate this to you that we would have to make sure that, that not only our park put back the way it is right now, but also that state highway. That's route, state route uh, eight. So that has to be put back. I'm not too encouraged by when I tell you that because I see some of what water department and sanitation department are doing right now, and not only in Dayton, but in other parts of uh, North Kentucky. So we have to stay up on it. I hope you do stay up on it because. They're not putting these roads back the way And what's going to happen, if they don't put it back the way it is right now, it's going to come back to us to, uh, uh, to refurbish. So I, I spoke with uh, the contact there and, and uh, reiterated those concerns, and I'm sure the concerns of all the city council that as they go and start to dig into some of these roads on the projects that we expect to be done uh, professionally. Very good. I did not go back, but I'm sure we will. Thank you. Any more comments? Donna roll call vote. Member Lynn? Aye. Member Neary? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Member Baker? Aye. Member Gifford? Aye. Okay. I missed the city attorney sitting attorney's report. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, department heads, uh, Ms. Harper. The only thing I have is, first of all, everybody has a copy of the financial. It's the year in financials. There still will be some bills that haven't, we haven't received. So if you have any questions on that, just let me know next or tomorrow or later this week. And then I also sent a copy to everybody from Tri-State Properties Clark LLC. They received a delinquent tax notice and feel that, you know, they should not have to pay the penalty and interest. What it is when 
we usually get the tax roll in August. And so when we got the, when we got the tax roll, still on our tax roll was auto owning the property located at 200 Clark. So the bill was sent to auto and the bill was never returned to the city. And if it does get to return to the city, I just send it to owner occupant because when we get one on August, by the time we print the bills, there's, um, there's stuff that's wrong on it because people buy places and, you know, sell places. <laughs> they eventually just got the bill in March in, or in May. They called for a copy of the bill and we sent them the copy of the bill. So because they said that they never received the bill, they would like um, council to remove the penalty. So I told them they had the right to send the letter and, and ask for that. I sent the letter where what the record was on the tax roll. And they got it. What when did they get it? Well, just it just in May. Because they called the office, I believe they must have called looking for a bill. <coughs> they was mailed out in September of 2014, but it was mailed to Auto, 200 Clark Street. And the new owner, uh, Tom and I, was looking on the PBA today. The new owner did get the property at the end of June. But when we got the roll in August, we had the old owner's name. How much is it? It's going to be, uh, the base amount is 2661.12, and the delinquent amount is 3113 transfer like that doesn't the, does the new owner assume any of the liens or tax liens against the property everything's usually cleared by the time you, when you buy something you yeah, they the usually property. work all the taxes out in the, so closing, not, in the closing papers usually it's not a lien it's a delinquent fee it's only that yeah. that we sent to the wrong address well we didn't send it to the wrong address i sent it to the address that was on the pba roll that we received <clears throat> how often does this happen Ms. It, it happens, um, I mean, throughout the year, but I would say it could happen as many as 10 times. Out of 2,000, roughly. Yeah, about 2,200 bills. But, I mean, as soon as we get the roll, we get the roll, roll in August, somebody could sell their house the next day. Right. And if they don't call and ask for a copy of their bill, we don't know. If the bill comes back, then we send it out to owner-occupant. And when it gets down to, like, the second the second link, Letter and we're not sending out 2200 then we start going to the roll of the PVA and checking addresses. So basically the PVA is probably giving the wrong address, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, it just wasn't... Just bad timing. Just bad timing, exactly. It's not, yeah, bad timing. You would have known that they bought it at that time? I had no idea. That That's what I'm saying. So, so it's going to cost you know, $100 or $500? It's going to cost, yes. It's going to cost the company, it's tri-state properties that bought the... Uh, Auto building in the industrial. Never have. 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 They did, they did buy the property in June, though. And this tax bill is for July 3rd of 14 to June of 13, of 15. I think they're liable for it, personally. If you don't get a tax bill, first thing I would, if I don't get a tax bill at my house, first thing I'm going to do is either call you or I'm going to call the county. That's, that's my, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I just think they, they didn't do it. They may have overlooked it, oversight. I just don't think we should change it, give them a, a pass on this because they didn't do their uh, due diligence. Yeah, I mean, usually when you're, when you're closing on property, it's your due diligence to make sure you have some of the homes. Do we have a motion to forgive this one? That was a new one. I made sure we were going to get one or we're going to move on. If we don't make the motion, we're going to move on. That's right. That's right. <coughs> okay. Okay. Anything else, Don? Uh, no, that's all I do. All right. Uh, Chief Hanfield. 
Uh, just a couple things. Um, neighborhood Watch, uh, the next meeting will be uh, July 20th. We had to reschedule the June one due to uh, a heroin rally that uh, a lot of people attended. Uh, so it was requested that we uh, reschedule that, so we did for July 20th. Uh, we did get the neighborhood watch signs in. Um, these are the ones that we came up with. Uh, Jerry Gifford helped us out with this. Uh, so we'll be seeking applications for these, not just everybody gets them. You know, we will do background checks and things like that for, um, you know, if you're convicted felons and things like that, that's it's something that you're not going to get. So uh, you pretty much have to earn this. So uh, everybody's doing their due diligence with uh, the neighborhood watch, and it's it's been pretty good so far. So um, the second thing is uh, the sense card app. It's doing good still. Uh, we're getting a lot of tips. Um, we were contacted by the Enquirer today, Fort Thomas, the city of Fort Thomas is adopting the app. Uh, so the Fort Thomas Police Department is uh, going to be introducing that app here shortly. I don't know what date they're officially going to unveil it. Or unveil it. So uh, it's pretty nice that we were the, you know, the, the founding department on that. And everybody's piggybacking off of that. It's pretty good. Um, and last, uh, the cemetery. Um, the desecration of the, the graves and stuff that happened over a year ago. Uh, I'm happy to say charges have been filed with the county attorney's office. So uh, we have uh, six people uh, that are going to be held accountable. Uh, so we'll have to put it through the processes and, and see what happens. So uh, we'll, we'll go through that. And uh, uh, Sergeant Baldwin did really good in following up with everything on that, doing interviews and uh, investigating them, pictures and, and stuff like that. So. Um, find out what happens in the case, but it is, it has been filed, so we'll be going to the courts. That's all. All right, thank you. Uh, Andy's off tonight. Uh, you got a, a report in, in your packet. Does anybody have any questions that we can relate back to her? Or is everything okay on that? I noticed that uh, the, the lower property, the northernmost property, was damaged in the fire and her terrace was torn down today. Yes. But the one that where the fire with the roof collapsed and everything is still standing. What are the plans for that, Michael? Well, we still, uh, sure. uh, from what I understand, we're still, there's still a few more things we have to tie up since uh, for the property owner before we can take any uh, permanent action. We don't want to move it. We're the ones that go in and do our down. But we've given the process to the owner. I don't know if That's correct. She's still in, she's still. She's been sent certified letters. We have nothing back for her. She's still in, she's over in Afghanistan. We're waiting for something to come back before we get turn the building down. Okay, so the, the demolition on the northernmost building that was done today, that was done at the owners. Hey, correct. We didn't have to cite him or anything like that. No. Right. All right, correct. Thank you. Okay. Is that the only thing you got? Yes, sir. Right. <coughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, uh, Steve Audrey. Uh, one of the tips for me last week, um, a lot of this, so that a lot of these weren't there. Um, this year, due to the problems of the state, we're going to perform a government audit. Um, doing that work will be Plattenberg and Associates, and it cost will be $5,000, and it will be starting in August. Uh, the other thing we brought up is Chief Offer, uh, Newtonport's fire chief, he's been working with Christ Hospital some fundings for the drug Narcan. So um, in the list of this, and they've been working really hard. I got the call last week when uh, we wouldn't be involved, and I said absolutely. So we have provided the hospital with some information, and hopefully we'll be able to start collecting some free monies to help with the drug. Um, 4450 for two milligram vial, and we buy 10 a month, which is $445. Um, Marking we buy a year is five thousand three hundred and forty. That's what we buying. That was last year's price. So hopefully that'll help help with the cost. Um, also our new defibrillators are in, they're in my office and Zoll is the name of the companies will be in next week. Uh, hopefully at the end of this week or next week we'll start training the firefighter medics and it'll be that one on the truck and one on the engine. Uh, so medic Unfortunately we'll be losing uh, firefighter paramedic Jacob Stanger uh, in January. Um, his wife nice job in Kansas City, they'll be moving. So we'll be hiring, I want to hire by December, get the 
firefighter medic trained and had him on duty by January. I did talk to Century Construction last night on our bathroom remodel, and they're wanting to start in sometime in fall. They're really busy right now, so uh, we're looking forward to having that done. Um, we're looking at possibly uh, one of the firefighters has a connection, possibly one of those trailer type bathrooms we can put hopefully behind the firehouse. It has a couple, of, it's not like an outhouse, it's a little bit nicer. Um, so we'll have that. In. Well, I hope that won't be there very long. It's, we wanted to go with this company because um, it is, it's, it's a construction company and they come in with numerous people to get the job done quick or clean and we won't have to be waiting around for some companies. It takes them a little longer. So and The only other thing I have is uh, July 23rd, our department will be hosting the Marine Security Committee meeting. Committee meeting is going to be at the Holiday Inn Express in Bellevue uh, from <coughs> 9 till noon. In Cincinnati, it's all local uh, agencies, the Coast, uh, State Police, and uh, Coast Guard. When is that Tuesday? Uh, that meeting will be July 23rd from 9 a.m. till noon. Uh, Holiday Inn Express was nice enough to uh, furnish a breakfast and have coffee and milk and water for the, for the whole time, too. I think they needed that in the conference room. Michael, and since you've been the chief, or in the last year, two years, have you seen what's the the overdose? In, uh, and I don't want you to give any any names or anything. Can't, can't do it legally, but have you seen it go up or down, or is it staying the same? Staying the same. Um, yes. One week we might get one, but the next week we might get ten. Sometimes we get three a day, and we'll wait for that, and then there'll be a day to it. But if, if you look at the what I gave out. Um, to the administrators and the police chiefs. You can see every month it's about that same number. It changes from city to city. It does. It it down, that's right now, that's correct. correct. And that's the way it is. Dave's been down since I think January. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to compare the two cities, but yes, yes they have. It's, 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 it's coming down now? Yes. Dave's has been down since, since January, and I think we had two last month, which you know, obviously has two too many. Right. You know, we had one yesterday morning here, but the person wasn't from Dave. I've been noticing a, a slow decline. Uh, that has to do with education, that has to do with enforcement, that has to do with the new heroin bills um, and, and support from the state, you know, from us. So, I mean, they're really helping out, and you can see, you can start seeing a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Rick? No, I don't have no report. I might have any questions. Yeah, I, I got one for Rick or Michael. Uh, for both of them, I guess. Uh, Rick or Michael, somebody can check into it. There's a catch basin at the top of Irvin Terrace. Uh, the catch basin, the blacktop's all wet. We're that in the street, but right next to it on the curb. Right? There's a catch basin that's uh, all the blacktop's broken away from that. Uh, if we don't get that fixed, and I know it's sanitation, but if we don't get that fixed, it's going to undermine the street even more. So, if one of these, Rick, you can look into it, or Michael, I don't care who does it. I have a question. Yes, sir. How many times have you cut the flood wall so far this year, Mr. Lucas? Uh, 10 or 12 times, probably. We figured it out not once a week and on a normal week. We figured out the one time that with the laser that you use, going end to end and back and forth, that it's about 72 miles. Um, I'm not for sure anymore. I mean, it, it's roughly 7,700 grass area. And it takes about probably 24 swipes. I think on one on certain parts of the flood wall, then you have all the flats. So, right. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, so that's like driving from here to New York City. <laughs> on one of those non-steerable lasers at an angle, cutting grass. I, I, you guys do a tremendous job keeping that. You really do. That's dangerous. I've seen, I've tried to drive one of those, not not one of ours, but they are dangerous, and especially on a tilt like that. I, I commend you for the work you do down there, sir. That's it. Uh, communication. Uh, standing committee report, finance, member Lenz. I have no. Uh, public safety, member Gifford. 
um, the, the, the block watch, of course, when she went over. But I'm checking with the county commissioner. He's going to propose something about Mary Inglis Highway and how bad it is for, <coughs> for bike riders, motorcyclists, or anyone. And it seems to me like they can come up with a better plan than what's demising. There, been, there, there was a death out there recently, and we got to do something. And I don't know where to start, so I would just as soon talk to them. Charlie Coleman's going to propose it to them. <coughs> but I think we've got to do something. And if you, the farther out you go, the more you see that you could, you could die at night. That's how bad it is. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, Public Works Member Burns. That would be sir. Thank you. Uh, anybody got any reports for uh, Member Tucker on Parks and Real Estate on his committee? Well, the park board did meet tonight, Monday night, and uh, addressing quite a few issues that are outstanding and uh, coordinating with the kite festival and everything. So, nothing major on the, on the park board. Okay. Thank you. Uh, personnel law and printing, um, Member Neary. Nothing to report, sir. Thank you. Economical development, Member Baker. I have nothing to report to that. Uh, Anybody on council have any petitions? I'm just trying to remind everybody we talked about this at the park board meeting Monday night. We've got less than about 90 days until the home fest down on the river. And there's going to be a lot of media attention drawn to our community. And I think that's about 12 weeks for us to put a shine on the city. This gives us a chance with a lot of new people coming in here looking at the city to maybe move some of these properties that have been sitting there for a long time. Uh, increase the home values, increase the, the taxes, quite honestly. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people, from, and it's not just going to be people that can afford million dollar homes, it's going to be people who want to see a million dollar home, but can't afford it and think that a $100,000 home or a $120,000 home is great. So I'm um, Asking all the citizens, uh, and I know we're working on this with the Main Street Board, shine the city up in the next 12 weeks. Uh, if your neighbors need help with their property, give them some help. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people coming through and a lot of potential new residents for the city. And it's a sense of urgency, that's all. Countdown, 90 days. I have a question for the city attorney. Uh, WLW has a former baseball player, Tracy Jones. Who is constantly bombarding the city of Dayton with negativity and he just talked about the wall and while they were on the air the guy that was on the phone with him said well you need to take a gun if you're going to go to Dayton Kentucky and it is very they do that the same thing to Norwood but he does it more often than not is there any way that we can say you know especially with the things coming up I mean that's a deterrent to keep business from even coming here, and it's a, and, and that's a big station. He lives in Bellevue. Huh? He, he lives, lives in, in Bellevue, 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 one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he doesn't have to talk about Dayton, and he does it more often than not. Would it be considered slander or libel, sir? Uh, it Probably depends not. on the context. Uh, there is some uh, free reign that the media has, but some of those comments, if we can find, um, that it would take a gun to your head or things of that nature, may overstep those bounds. To uh, the problem is First Amendment rights are really on the uh, very important <coughs> issue at the moment, but we can look at them. And Send a letter to his bosses yes. and just say, you know what, back off a little bit. Yeah, we can, we can look at them individually, but the problem is, is if we attack it too much, That's right. they can, they, we end up opening ourselves to suit by me. Okay, so so he makes these comments and people are getting ready to come to the home <coughs> and they're going, I'm not going down there. That's not helping us any. No, no, it's not. I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying from a legal perspective, there's a limitation, there's a line in the sand that we have to move towards between First Amendment rights to free speech and media uh, coverage versus uh, actual defamatory slander comments. And we'll have to look at those comments individually and in context, and okay. then we can judge what action can be taken from there. But if it's something, if, you, if you'd like to bring that, if you've got links or something where I can you know, something I can uh, work every, on, that'd be great. Whole, every show he does is on podcast, but I believe that... Have you heard him do it before? I've heard him do it before, but I think everybody knows that Tracy Jones plays a part 
Everyone well, we it. understand that. But he, what about he, he plays yeah. a clown a lot of times. He plays a clown, but the point is, when you're trying to clean up the image, well, I understand, sir. That, that bothers me. Uh, it bothers me as well, but I think sometimes when you push those limits, you might take them on. Bad cop, yeah. You might take them on to do it even more. That's what Norwood well, no. does. It, it just, ain't working for them. It's not working for them. So I, 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 Ignore him and take him as a client. And council members, I will look at those. Okay, that's for you. Okay, okay. You give it to some of my other investigation. Anyone else? Uh, petition from the audience. Anyone would you like to address the city council? You'll have a chance to do your presentation. I'm just giving it, opening it up for everybody. Oh, this is a new, I haven't been here for a while. It's a new <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> come to my uh, attention, Mayor Brodsky, that uh, a recent meeting that you and Mr. Gifford and Mr. Burns were in attendance with Mr. Joe Frohmeyer, one of the owners and proprietors of Juan Vita Pizzeria. And during this meeting, it was conveyed to me that there was an alleged consensus that certain people who frequent VV, and I believe the term was make the skin crawl, some of those people being named as myself, my wife, Kathy Bolter, and former mayor, Ken Rankle. And this was apparently then explained as a reason why uh, individuals do not frequent or support the business. Jeff, there were no names mentioned. I was there. The well, I, I'm just so, saying this can be. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Skin crawl thing was mentioned. Huh? I never heard of it. Well, personal feelings aside, BB, I think, is probably one of the few successful businesses that we have in town. Uh, it would be a loss for the city if they decide to leave. And I think they're probably close to that point. Uh, I could be wrong, but it seems that in recent months, they've been the target of several code enforcement issues along with the message of negativity from city leaders. I, I say this sends a very negative message to them. Extremely negative. Now, maybe some of those code enforcement issues were legitimate. I don't know, but I see a lot of other issues in the city that needs attention other than that business. And when you talk about code enforcement issues, now let's talk about trash. I mean, a recent posting on the Dayton website by Code Enforcement Officer Annie Christabel described trash pickup requirements as follows. 290 gallon toter type containers or one large item such as a couch or 432 gallon containers and one large item. Anything above this is an oversized load, requires a call to uh, public trash services and a fee of $20 to be paid directly to them. Now, I don't know if that's the same for businesses or not. Virtual is it? Uh, industrial is a little bit different. Is Virtual is a little bit different. How different? I don't, I don't know what their the order tax degree is. Um, I'd look up for you if you'd like me to. Uh, I certainly would like. You know, because I mean, actually, they're online now. You have to be the order so they're online. Oh, I guess, yeah, they're, they're online. online. You can look them up. They're all online. Yes. I, mean, <coughs> online, I don't I think the Republican sort of right up there. I don't think the trash contract is on the the, uh, the ordinance that says what you can have is online. That part of the ordinance. I'm just saying that if, you know, if you pay ten dollars or fifteen dollars more than we do, that's a crime because that's a weekly currency for business. This is this is right here. We're recycling on top of that. So that's a weekly occurrence. Yes. So I guess rather than me look it up online since I can't find anything online, uh, I did go online, couldn't find it. I don't know, can't find any zoning ordinances online either. So I'm not sure. <coughs> you can pull them up now, that'd be great because I, I can't find them. I, I did go under departments, but uh, maybe she can, if she's not here today, you know, 
and maybe next meeting she can, you know, convey what those requirements are. But what's my business got to do with Bonavita? Um, it has nothing to do with Bonavita. It has everything to do with code enforcement. That's all. Uh, the, let's go. Let's go back to that again. When we, when we left there in that meeting, one of the comments that they made was the police department in the past has never done anything they've asked them to do. And there were no names mentioned, and I was there. So wherever you get your information from, you better go back and, and revisit that, because that's not the truth. I'm the one who said I don't frequent it probably as much as I should because I don't care to, to mix with people that, that I don't get along with. So what? That's maybe, my prerogative. Maybe that it is your prerogative. But I didn't say there's nothing that was sure. said like what you're saying here. I have a grandson that works down there. I has nothing to do with that. And, and the bottom line is I would never deter any business from them, but I have my prerogative as to who I mix with Absolutely. and where I eat. But Absolutely. nothing was said like that. And Mr. Baresi was at the meeting as well. Yes. And I believe he could tell you the same thing. They were happy that we were going to do something about the problems they were having with the neighbor. That's not what was conveyed to me. Well, I'm sorry. And also they talked about the donations that they make for the city constantly. Absolutely. And, and, there, and there's a way that they do it so it doesn't hurt them as bad as you think it does. But we, we don't have anything bad to say about it. It was a good meeting, I thought. Now, now you're turning it into a, could be something bad, huh? It sounded bad to me. The owner conveyed to me. Well, no, I'm personally going to go down and talk to him. Go talk. I have no problem. But, which brings a, a, another point, I guess, by the way. Uh, we're going to start tomorrow with a Facebook blitz. Uh, for a gathering in Columbia on Thursday, July 23rd, to try to support the business, and a portion of those profits will go to the Dayton Schools Chess Program. So, if you want to show your support, come out on July 23rd. Well, like I said, it'll, it'll start a Facebook blitz um, tomorrow. So, thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council at this time? It, can I say something sure. about the, the garbage real quick? Just because, you know, working at the city and receiving the, the, the calls and stuff, it does read, like you say, exactly like Annie has on there, but the majority of the people put more out than that, and as long as CSI picks it up, that's the issue. The, the whole idea is to get rid of the garbage. You know, not to have it in your backyard, not to have it in your side yard. So as long as CSI don't, doesn't have a problem picking it up, I don't think there's a problem. As soon as they have a problem picking it up, and it's usually only when there's a gigantic sit out across the whole front of the house, then they call the city building, then Annie will make sure it's cleaned up. But usually, if you ride around the city, most of the people have more put out than what, what's allowed. But they pick it up. Yeah, I'd like to uh, clarify one point, yeah. Jeff. Uh, in regards to the point of view of the business, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think they have had any code fines against the business. Uh, if there's been anything, it's, it's usually uh, the rental property that they have. Now, we did meet with one of in the county to clarify uh, some things that they had built outside uh, to get those in order, but it had nothing to do. There weren't any code violations written or anything to against the point of view of the business itself that, that may have gotten. Thank you. Okay. On a more positive note, um, I just want to let the council know that the Civic Club, even though we did not win the um, the grant by Cincy Sundays, and for those of you that came, thank you very much for supporting us. But we did not win. Uh, we are going to go ahead and go forward with that kite festival. It will be October the tenth. We're um, we had to change the date because we have two professional kite teams coming in and the National Kite Convention is that Monday after our first date that we had picked, so they, they would all be out of town. So we, we went to October 10th, it's been approved by the park board. Um, we are contacting uh, all the local companies to see if they can help support us um, by donating money and we are going after some big uh, corporations too, like Airhead Candy, The Gas Fan, um, and uh, the air shuttle, ultimate air shuttle. So we're trying to get some corporate sponsorship from them. Uh, the professional kite team is selling us the kites for three dollars a kite kid. So every kid that comes to this festival will get a free kite. 
the kite team's going to put on a show, and then they will help their kids, our kids, uh, put their kites together and help them fly and get them started and uh, work with us for the entire time of the event. They just aren't just going to come and do their little thing and leave. They're going to help. Tammy, that's also for not only for Dayton, right? It's for right, it's else. for anybody in Northern Kentucky. I have extended an invitation to uh, Bellevue's mayor to participate with us. Um, you know, by contacting the companies, I'm contacting both school systems to try to get the bands down there, cheerleaders. I'm trying to make it kind of a carnival type circus event. Uh, we're working with um, basins and shriners to get some clowns and mimes and a couple of uh, companies that have the bouncy things and um, the, um, I can't remember anything what it's called, where you fly up in the air, bungee jumps. Bungee jumps. So, we got a lot going on. I've contacted all the local mascots in the area to see if they will come down, and walk around, and just entertain the kids. And um, I don't know. We got a lot going on. If half of this comes through, it should be a very good event for the city. It's also this weekend of. Uh, <coughs> we didn't know that the, the home show was for three weekends in a row, so we will be in that middle week having this festival. What's the big day? October 10th. Any questions? Great effort. Thanks. Good luck. Good work. Thank you. Anyone else like to draw down? A couple points that uh, you were talking about about Home Fest being 90 days away. And then I forgot the person you were talking about, Tracy. Somebody was talking about negatively. Yeah, you know, talking negatively about Dayton. Really, it could be looked at like that's a really good opportunity to make that make that be incorrect information and give people that's an opportunity for us to really let Dayton shine during those three weeks that that's going on. So, just let me mention if we could get help get the buzz going about that thing going on in three months from now, it'd be a big, big deal for Dayton. So maybe use that as an opportunity. He just annoyed. It's just not once in a while. It's a lot. Yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar with it, but it's like, you know, it's, it's an opportunity. Look at that, it's like, they're talking about Dayton. You know, they can talk about all the work. David Norwood alone, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's 30, that's uh, 90 days away, so it's uh, you know, all get together, we can help create a buzz about it. Talk about it on Facebook, talk about it. Instead of talking negative stuff on Facebook, anybody, talk about how the Home Fest is going to be this really awesome thing going on in 90 days from now, right down here in Dayton. Anyone else? Any unfinished business? Um, sir, I guess it is unfinished business, uh, and we have the Civic Activity Board slash Civic Club, and I, I, I'm not, I don't recall you having assigned anyone yet to the board formally. We could do it by. Uh, I do it by executive order. Yeah. That's what it's done. Um, civic, the civic board does by executive yeah, order. Yeah, yeah. No more executive order. Oh, you don't have to announce no, it to me. No, no, well, no. who is on the board, just for our reference? Um, I can tell you. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got a list delayed here with Tammy. Eugene Hamlin, Teresa Brooks, myself, uh, Tiffany Gifford, and Amber Minnie. Minnie. And when is your next meeting? July 15th. And at the VFW? Uh, at the, at the Y uh, after I've talked to her to get approval. So 7 o'clock July 15th. She's, she's already told me, okay. 7 o'clock, <laughs> I presume? July 15th. What, is that Tuesday night? No, Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Okay. Thank you. Any other business? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, two things I'd like to bring up. Uh, I'm sorry? I'm yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, the director, or not the director, but the, the, the lead guy at the community garden, uh, Christopher Kubik, asked me if he needed a permit to put up a little library uh, down at the community garden. He wanted to put some uh, different cookbooks or whatever for how to, how to eat what's coming out of the garden. So I asked Michael today if, uh, if he needed that, and he said he didn't think so, just to, to ask for council's permission. Uh, and so we asked Mr. Edge as well, uh, since the yeah, city owns that is property. The, is the city own that actual parcel? Yeah. Yes, if they sir. own that parcel, all we need is a uh, motion and approval by the council. Can I, can I make that motion now? 
Uh, I'd like to motion that we allow a little library at the community garden uh, on third near Ken. Seconded. Motion by Ben, second by Gary. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No order. Thank you. Uh, the second thing I'd like to bring up is wow, what an exciting week in Cincinnati. Uh, I work downtown. Uh, I'm a baseball nerd. I think I make that apparent. Mm -hmm. uh, and today I got to uh, stand alongside uh, the vice mayor for the city of Cincinnati, the COO of uh, the Cincinnati Reds, Phil Castellini, and welcome Major League Baseball to Cincinnati. It's a great time for our region. Uh, we've been working closely with Bellevue uh, and Major League Baseball to bring a party to Bellevue's Beach Park. Uh, that will be the day of the baseball game. Uh, so that's Tuesday next week. Uh, the spotlight of the world is going to be on us, so I invite everybody to come down, bring your kids, because they will remember this for the rest of their lives. Bring them down, watch the baseball game with the community rather than in the living room. Uh, you'll be able to see the fireworks from their park. We're really lucky to have good neighbors to uh, party with. I've got some flyers in the back uh, by Mr. Newspickle on the, on the table. Anybody who wants to volunteer, we love volunteers. And, uh, and go National League. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, go play though. At this time, you want to do a presentation? Yeah, it's not even that big. Oh, okay. It's okay. also because I did, can't even make it work on that. Oh, okay. In the same time of year. Uh, along those lines, as far as the party goes, though, um, I I was put in charge of kids' activities, so you know it's going to be fun. Um, but just a few of the things that um, we're already planning on is there's a big baseball pinata. We're going to have um, kids make uh, baseball bracelets. Um, we're going to have wiffle ball. There's going to be a ton of stuff for the kids. They're going to have a blast, be able to take some arts and craft things home, play a bunch of games. So. Um, and I heard rumor of a inflatable slip and slide. It will not be as good as scars as on the flood wall, but it will be there. So, just so, you know. okay. so sorry, this is, I'm going to like eventually pass this around or something because there's a bunch of um, pictures on here, but I'll kind of just do it like this for now. So I, um, I was asked um, by the Kentucky Department of Education to present um, this Friday um, for their tri-state orientation for all 21st century grants, which 21st century grants all have to do with after-school programming. And um, I'm supposed to, I'm, they asked me to present because of our middle and high school programs. We recently had an audit and a site visit um, at Dayton High School. And I just kind of wanted to share with you um, some of the strengths that they were um, saying about our programs and um, some of the things they just really liked. And again, I know you very, very good, but we'll, uh, I'll, I'll pass it around. Um, so some of the things, I won't read it word for word, but they mentioned that our, our site coordinator, who's Jamie Gordon, um, you met her a few weeks uh, back, um, she had a um, very strong um, uh, connection with the students. Um, she welcomes them and has great conversation, and there's just such a good relationship that she has with all the kids. So that was a very good strength, they said. There's also a strong relationship with the Youth Service Center, which is run by Sherry Chan, um, and also um, the, we have shared advisory councils. Um, so she uh, and the student voice. She really liked how we had um, our students really leading the different um, things about about activities. Um, and you'll see a picture of that later on. Uh, another one was the principal was interviewed and just a strong advocate for us, and that is just a huge thing in any um, activity that you're doing with school to have the principal really be. Um, is, is awesome and then um, those interviewed were well aware of the program's goals and objectives one of which was Joey Tucker and um, along uh, that being said as far as our program goals and objectives I wanted to make sure that I shared those um, program at least the goals with you all I'm not going to go into all the details of the objectives but our main three goals for this grant are uh, to improve the academic performance of um, students to provide increased extracurricular activities and enrichment opportunities that support youth's healthy growth and development, non-academic specifically. So that incorporates a whole lot of things, but it's basically just in enrichment. Can it have anything to do with, um, you know, uh, sports-related kind of things? It could be robotics. It's uh, lots of STEM activities, so it's a, a big um, goal there. And then the third one is to increase opportunities for family engagement. 
Um, that is, I think, one personally that I want to work on um, more this year. Um, it is a little bit more challenging of a goal, but we are working towards it. So anyway, um, I'm going to have this stuff available on our um, Facebook page. It's also, we're going to, um, with the school's website, we're going to have a page for our 21st century, and the goals and objectives will be on there. And it's just important to know the goals and objectives because when people are coming to me asking, um, you know, what can the grant do? What can we, it all comes back to if it comes right from here that, you know, is it, can we directly relate this cost and expense back to one of our goals and objectives? Now, there's a few things that we, you know, have that are unallowable, like we can't buy food unless it's like a cooking club. We can't just have like a party and buy food, stuff like that. But for the most part, anything that goes along with these lines, we're able to do. All right, and then just the next couple are just pictures of our different programs that are so neat. Um, and I just wanted to, this is definitely one I want to pass around. So this is our archery, um, archery club, and we are using the First Baptist Church's gym. That's where this picture is taken. So just, you know, using the resources that we have in this community. We have such great resources that sometimes just aren't being utilized. I'd love to see that gym you know, being utilized um, more for sure. But this was just a great opportunity that um, that church helped us out with. And now we're, we are able to use some of the grant to um, help with the cost of, of the gym and just wear and tear and all those kind of things. Um, but even before we had the grant, that church was, was letting us come there for free and everything. So they've been wonderful. Um, uh, we have our cooking club, and then it shows in here the fam one of our family events, which uh, the kids, the high school and middle school students cooked, um, prepared this meal for their families to all come and attend, and then we do open it up to the community as well. Oh, I think I forgot to mention, um, on the front there, the title of this is Dayton and Bellevue's um, After School Program. We do combine our um, after school programs, mostly you know, due to size, and then also because um, Bellevue has a 21st century grant as well, and so we're able to combine resources as opposed to having you know, purchasing two different sets of archery equipment, which is a heck of a lot of money, just so you know, um, we are able to do one and still have competitions between both schools. So with all of these being said, there's sometimes where we will flip between locations, whether it's Bellevue or Dayton, and then we have shared locations like the church and the teen center. Uh, then we have our songwriting um, uh, club it is so Cool. They just started this this song from scratch, wrote it from scratch, and it's actually I think going to be able to be performed um, for at our our team center. Hopefully um, two weekends from now. So I'll post that and everything. Uh, but then here's another, and then just another picture of our student advisory council. Um, I'll skip that, and then just really good picture of the teen center, although all the walls are white right now, but we have a stage there, and I'd love um, if people have ideas as far as bands, um, especially, you know, high school bands that aren't, you know, in regular band for whatever reason, but we'd love to hear um, what kids, you know, kind of just open mic things, whether it's poetry or um, singing or, or whatever, so if you guys have ideas for that or know of any, you know, students, college students that want to perform, that's why we had it built. And then there's just some other fun ones. So anyway, I'll, um, I don't know, just leave it like on the back there and where you guys can cast around, I guess. So that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're in the new business. Uh, we need a date for senior system picnic. The county is on the 16th of September. We usually have it about the middle of September. Wednesday or Thursday, whichever. Um, we could have it on Wednesday the 23rd or Thursday the 24th. You want to go with one of those days? It's fine. I mean, uh, what day do we know we have Wednesday? Usually Wednesday. Wednesday the 23rd. Anybody having any objection to that? We need a motion to set down. No, I just need to call now. Is everybody okay with that? So, the conflict, any date with anybody? We're good with it? Okay. I'll just call and make sure it's available, which it usually is, because it's in the day. Right. Any other uh, new business? Um, I had asked, actually, it would be an unfinished business about uh, 
Mr. Edge and I were talking earlier about the form online for reporting code enforcement violations. Uh, I want to and finish. Uh, Mr. Edge, can you give us an update on that? Currently, that is still in the works. Uh, unfortunately, there's a uh, problem, and uh, we haven't spoken with Mr. Baker about this yet. Uh, his company is that uh, unfortunately the uh, uh, software on the server needs to be updated so that way we can update the software on the website to be able to process the actual contact form that we can create. So we'll have to have someone uh, from that end do a little bit of updating and then at that point we should be pretty well good to go. But we've already talked about and got a format kind of in mind that we're ready to try out and let's go forward from there. You figure in the next couple months? Oh, yes, hopefully within the next month. So I see this working for code enforcement, much like the Century Guard works for the police, and even being able to remain anonymous. Oh, but there'll be some, uh, uh, name it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but the unfortunate part with those kind of code enforcement violations and with anything that you have on the internet like that is that you're going to want some manner in which to track people. <coughs> that way you don't have robots and stuff like that for you. And that way, you don't have your code enforcement officer running about town looking for violations that don't exist. That way, it doesn't become an opportunity for people just to, oh, yeah, I'm going to pester my neighbor today. Yeah, we may find out it needs some filtering if yeah. it's an overload on it, but I'd just like to have that tool rather than leaving a message with somebody and then hear that nobody got back to them. Oh, yeah. Well, at least that part of it gives you a full track. Right, exactly. Which is. Exactly. Now we get to work with then, so we'll get there. Uh, any new, any more new business? All right. Uh, I need a motion to go to an executive session for one reason. I, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to go into executive session for potential litigation under KRS 61.810, section one, uh, subsection C. Need a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Bill. Thanks, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye